technology. With every advancement, mankind becomes ever more adept at navigating the challenges of today and the future. These steps forward come with a cost. As a result of less physical activity, combined with increasing amounts of time slumped in front of computers or handheld devices, bad posture is on the rise, along with its crippling cousin, lower back pain. But despite back pain's debilitating effects, there is hope. Increasingly, average Jills and Joes are turning to ballroom dancing, lauded by many for its positive effects on poise and posture. This educational video explores how you too can harness the power of ballroom dancing to live your life upright and pain-free. Hi guys, my name is Ian Crew. I'm an instructor at the Joy of Dance Center in Toronto, Ontario, and the creator of SocialBallroom.Dance, where you can learn your dance at your place on your schedule. Today, we're interviewing a number of experts on correct ballroom dancing posture, and ultimately, how we can use it to improve both our ballroom dancing and our daily lives. But first up, why is good posture so important? Good posture is important because it, it uh, allows you to use your joints properly. So the more your posture is off, the change in the bony structure mm -hmm. happens, which causes uh, continuous wearing. Now instead of doing a, a movement, and it's positive to the body, it becomes negative. And this is why posture is so important, because it's an indicator that these things are off. And have been off for a little while, because now it's visual. I can right. see that the posture is off. This means change has already been on, underway. Posture, number one, I would say is a method of injury prevention so as a dancer there's so much risk involved even if you're doing something simple a repetitive movement doing the same thing over and over with poor posture will slowly develop into chronic issues in your body say pain in your lower back or pain in your knees or pain in your ankles or maybe in your neck and it won't necessarily come across as an injury um, and it's maybe not an injury it's just overuse and causing pain um, and really good posture is the primary way I would say to avoid developing pain in your body and helping to prevent yourself from um, from injury. Yep. Posture is important for everyday life mm -hmm. and I think that many students of ours do come to learn how to dance to be able to improve on the posture mm -hmm. so that's why um, we have the students and that's why we're trying to do the first thing in the very first few lessons is to put people together in the comfortable position right. to be able to do the things that we teach. Right. So, so they need to have that posture before a lot of the right. movements of arm dancing that's become right. possible. Because it's different because the gravity is center of the uh, of two partners because the ballroom is a couple dancing. Mm -hmm. So when those centers are related properly, it can go round, yeah. connected, it can go linear, sideways. So we do need that posture to be able to do the most that we teach. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of the posture. Clearly, good posture is vital to overall health. Yet many might ask, what do I have to worry about? How can bad posture affect me? Generally, this uh, normally happens with arthritis of any joint. Right. This is because of bad posture, either by habit or by overuse. So the most important thing is maintaining your body mm -hmm. so that you don't fall into this overuse uh, situation. So other than arthritis, these kind of things, then you just get the uh, joint aches and pains, yeah. generally, or cramping in the leg or foot or back, uh, muscle fatiguing quickly. Mm -hmm. So at the point of after pain, there comes a point where it becomes weak again. Right? So you're trying to pick up a cup and it drops out of your hand because you don't have the strength. The muscle is too overdone to even hold uh, something. Mm -hmm. So those are some other kind of issues that you might see as well. Now you're no doubt convinced of the importance of good posture. But how does ballroom dancing help to improve that posture? One of our correspondents decided to try a short class to find out. All right, so if I was a total beginner coming into your ballet class, you know, what, what are some uh, like initial tips you would give me to get me started thinking about correct posture? Right, so let's place you just in front of our camera here. All right. And I would get you to just put your feet side by side parallel. Mm -hmm. No, face that way. Oh, right, 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 okay. Side by side, good. I'm the and trouble then, kid in the class. Self in the mirror and as you assess what's going on in your, in your body, 
But the first thing I'd say is just look straight forward. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to drop your chin and relax. He's not relaxed. <laughs> I'm a terrible student. Oh, okay. And I gotta breathe through all this, so, huh? You want wide breath. Yeah, you see how my hands are going in and out. Oh, that's quite good. Yeah. So there's your breath with lift and ease. Good. And like the feeling of an hourglass. Back to the side, please. Mm -hmm. Your arms out. Well, I was thinking if I have to push down with my legs. Yes, but your legs are straight. Ah. So energetically push as if you were about to rise. Okay, so the ball's my feet. You're about to rise, but you're not rising. Okay. You're pressing down. Got it. While you are floating upwards. So if you have a complete beginner coming into your classes, what are some of the first things that you would tell them about having correct ballroom posture? Well, we first of all need to align the head, the shoulders, hips, and foot. Right, right. Just making sure the kind of blocks of weight are centered over each other. So there's not such a thing as a good and a bad posture. There is so much in between. Mm -hmm. And I think we should start from the point where the student's posture does not overwhelm learning the steps. So um, it has to be introduced. Yes. It doesn't mean that the students will be able to practically do it at the time of the lesson. But you plant it and you reinforce it over the period of time. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the, many people can relate to uh, parts of the body that were kind of aligned, like a pyramid, one yeah, on top yeah. of the other. And when we move, that pyramid sometimes gets crooked. <laughs> so one part falls off the other part, and this is when it's impossible to dance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even telling that much, introduction of the alignment of the body parts is, is a great way to start to introduce the posture. You now know that ballroom dancing can play an important role in keeping our back healthy and happy. But can ballroom dancing contribute to the problem? There are some in international standard that <laughs> would hurt follows in the long run if they do many hours a week and if they do it professionally mm -hmm. because of misalignment of the neck and, and the side of the body. They are reclining over to the left. Always keeping that chest they... open and that corkscrew yes, shape off. Yeah, so that's something that you would not need or do as a, a person that walks in the street. Mm -hmm. But it will introduce the muscle tone that will actually, the corset, the muscle corset that will actually help you to uh, mm. to keep the good posture in everyday uh, life. But I would think that um, it's it's the only one that actually might give you has some problem. There is a Latin, international Latin, that has very balletic um, upright with the intensity in the low back. Right. And uh, if we don't move the hips in the right place, in mm -hmm. the right direction, that can give you low back ache as well. But again, if not done correctly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? I'm occasionally guilty that's of the, this as well. <laughs> that's the two of those things I can think of. 
Anything that brings your body into an extreme position, if you're not strong enough to do that movement, or if you're not flexible enough, or if you don't have the understanding of how to maintain good skeletal alignment, so have good posture, um, your a movement, any movement could potentially make injure you. So like in ballroom dancing, for example, you've got many degrees of your frame. And so you go up and then you slowly are trying to go further backwards. But if you don't understand how to use your core or um, how to extend through the upper back, your thoracic spine, you'll end up putting a lot of stress into your lower vertebrae and they're they're pretty susceptible if um, to, to injury. Mostly I've heard actually from other teachers and stuff that mm -hmm. in ballroom, there's not a huge emphasis on stretching. Right. Right? And this leads to these postural issues because when you have somebody coming in that wants to enjoy dance, mm -hmm. they are pre-exposed already to life, right? Yeah. Life has happened before they met you, therefore there's already imbalances, let's mm -hmm. say, right? So now if you uh, continue to express this imbalance, either by the shoulder being up, moving the shoulder blades uh, out of the center position more to the side, they call that winging of the scapula, or movement away from the center of the spine, and then we have some different issues with the shoulders and traps starting to take over, pecs tightening, these kind of thing. Another thing that I find is tightness in the calves. Everyday life, you have tight calves, most likely anyway, mm -hmm. at the age of 16. So <laughs> now just keeping more understanding that you have to maintain, mm -hmm. right? Keep it stretching, just keep stretching. And sometimes there's a point where the muscle won't stretch through traditional you now point your toes, move forward, put your foot against the wall, get that nice stretch yeah. against the wall. Sometimes that won't be effective. So right. at this point, generally you have more cramps, you feel, oh, you know, I gotta stretch it out. They stop before they finish their routine. And this is the indicator to the teacher, hey, you know what? Maybe we should do a little bit more stretching. And if stretching doesn't work, maybe we should seek somebody that has a little bit more input on this issue. Despite these obstacles, it seems correct technique is the best way to protect ourselves. Still, many might remain skeptical. How does what you learn in a ballroom dance floor help you with your posture in your everyday life? I like to sometimes talk about your head as a, um, like a hot air balloon. And so if, you're, and if your spine is say maybe a chain of little mini balloons dangling down underneath your hot air balloon and your pelvis is like the basket underneath the hot air balloon. So there's energy from the fire, from the core, drawing you upwards, but it almost has better sensation, you get a better result, if you just feel that this whole area is floating upwards in opposition to the pelvis, which is weighted downwards with like sandbags or whatever, you know, like something's holding you down. And that tends to, instead of trying to force yourself into certain positions, um, that is a kind of more natural um, relieving way to allow the body to hang in a, in a really nice neutral alignment. Okay, and we can use this like when we're walking around or sitting yeah. at our desk or yeah. pretty much any time, huh? Yeah. There you have it. The experts agree that with proper training and application, ballroom dancing can help transform how you hold yourself and so counter the effects of back pain. So remember, an investment in ballroom dancing is an investment in a high quality life.